today I'll be going through how to make a tally counter which is basically just a regular counter with an ESP32. In this case I'm using the 30 pins dev kit v1 ESP32 dev port and then show the output to an OLED display. Before we get started I'm going to show you what we'll need. So what we'll need is an ESP32 dev board, you can use any dev board that makes it possible for I2C communication or in other words have SDA and SCL pins. This is required for the OLED display if you're using the same display as I am. Secondly, you'll need an OLED display. I'm using a 128 by 64 SSD 1306 OLED display. Next, you'll need two push buttons, a breadboard and a few male to male jumpers. Now let's look at the schematics. So for the push buttons, we'll connect one pin to the ground and one pin to a GPIO pin. Here I'm using GPIO 12 and GPIO 14. For the OLED display, we'll connect the VCC and ground to 3.3 volts and ground respectively. For the SCL, connect it to GPIO 22 and for the SDA, connect it to GPIO 21. And that's all for the schematics. Okay, so once you've assembled the schematics into your breadboard, you should get something like this. So here's the ESP, here's the OLED, and then here are the two push buttons that we're going to use for up and down and reset. Alright, so I actually already written the code for this project. I'm not going to do any live session coding, but I do will explain bits of my code so you can have better understanding of the code. So first we have the include statements, here are just for the I2C and then these are for the OLED. Next we define the screen width and height, uh, minus 1 to 8 and 64. And then next we define the OLED reset button, which is minus 1 here, uh, because it shares the reset pin. And then next uh, we define the screen address. Um, in my case it's 0x3c. Um, how did I get this? I got it from an I2C program. You can look it up in GitHub. And then next we declare the Adafruit SSD1306 uh, class. I set the name to display and then give the arguments, the width, the height, and then the wire address and then the OLED reset. For the next part, we have the button class. Um, I created this class so I can manage all things that are related to buttons more easily, more understandable and stuff like that, you know. So this PTN class has these properties you know like the bounce threshold last steady state last bounce state bu button bin is pressed current state um, counter pointer and then the modifier okay so the button class when declared needs these three arguments the pin the number and the address of the counter so here we can see that um, the button pin is equals to pin, we assign the button pin, we assign the modifier, and then we assign the counter address. And then for the first member function that we have is the add counter. So the add counter here is actually going to add our actual counter, which is outside of this button class. So we have um, star counter added by the modifier so the modifier here is actually like um, it can be plus one or minus one um, it's up to the button and then we also made um, an error handling here if the value of counter is below zero make that to zero so you know we can't have a negative counter we can have a negative counter um, that's wrong so we have to make this error handling. So for the next function that I'm going to go through is the button check. 
the button check is actually one of the most important functions um, in this class it must be called at least once in the loop function so as you can see here in the loop function um, there is an up button dot button check and a down button dot button check what does it actually do what does the button check actually do so it reads from the current state of the button um, the current state using digital read and then applies button debouncing what does button debouncing do um, I'm not going to explain that um, more further but um, for more information on debouncing you can check esp32.io I'm basically saying that if the last debounce time is more than the threshold which is 50 milliseconds um, and when the last steady state is high and the current state is low the button is pressed and then I want to add to the counter it's actually just basically saying that um, when the button goes from high to low uh, the button is pressed and then add a number to the counter same as this piece of code when the button goes from low to high the button is not pressed this is also just for the debouncing after the button class um, we have the functions that um, the additional functions here we have one two three four I believe four four functions display center tally counter tally reset and then splash screen um, four of these actually just commands the output that I show to the OLED display center is just a printing function you know it just prints a text in the center with offset X and Y and then tally counter is just to show the counter um, to the OLED it just prints the counter the number and the word counter to the OLED tally reset is to show a reset text and delay it by two seconds to not receive any input from buttons and then splash screen is just like its name it's a splash screen when it puts up it loads this yeah it's just for um, aesthetic purpose I believe yeah it's not that important I'm just going to explain this piece of code the tally counter because it contains um, much of the basic functions so here we have display clear display display is the object name that I declared before see here it's Adafruit SSD 1306 display I've display I've declared it as display so clear display is actually to clear the display clearly OLED and then set text color it's pretty intuitive you set the color of the text set text size it's to set the text size and then display center which is actually the code the function that I declared before uh, it displays to the center the word counter with the offset of w x equals to zero and the offset of y is minus 24 which means it's going to be more above the center line and then we set the text size again and then we display center the counter with offset of x by 0 and then offset of y is 8 which means it goes down by 8 pixels and then the display function here is actually just going to display what we've set we can actually call this once not we don't have to call it here we don't have to call it here display to display no we don't need to do that we can actually only to we can actually do it only once yeah so that's basically it for the four functions to show the OLED the contents to the OLED okay so we have these variables uh, the pin up button pin down counter reset time second loop the pin up and pin down it's actually pretty cute pretty clear it's these are for the pins counter is for the count and the reset time um, we're going to use it later second loop um, we're going to use it later also this is a variable meant for checking a second loop um, I'm going to show you what it what I mean in a second 
And then next we declare two button objects. One is for up button, one is for down button. Here button class up button, pin up um, pin up button for the pin, one for the modifier and address of the counter. And then next we have a button, another button class down button, pin down button, modifier as minus one, and then the address of the counter. For the setup, we have serial begin by the baud rate. I choose eleven fifty two hundred, and then next we check if the OLED is connected or not. If not, we loop. We don't proceed. And then next shows the splash screen. See here, splash screen with delay of two seconds, and after that we clear it, and then. We declare the pin modes for pin up and pin down by using input pull up because uh, we use buttons. And for the loop, as you can see here, um, the functions that we must call is button check and then we must call tally counter. So here we have these three functions tally counter, up button, button check, down button, button check. Um, but as you can see, these only apply um, up and down function. We also need to apply a reset button by pressing both of the buttons. So when the up button is pressed and the down button is pressed, um, it should go into reset. Yeah, it should reset the counter back to zero. So here, this is it is why we have this piece of code if up button is pressed and down button is pressed then we use the timing for two seconds so you see um, I'm using millis here so if I use millis without this second loop it's actually going to immediately trigger so when I press the button when I press both of the buttons in an instant um, it's actually going to reset uh, but that's not what I want I want to the two of the buttons to both of the buttons when pressed we have to wait like um, two seconds before it resets so th that's why I actually create the second loop variable so if it already passed the second loop which means it already passed the two second mark it resets the counter to zero and then it shows a reset text to the OLED you know it's, it's just like that and then for the else is just if this statement is not um, is not met, and then it just sets resets the second loop to false. You know, it's just like that. This piece of code is just for debugging. Um, if you want to check the raw data, you can just uncomment it. But for the current project, I'm just going to keep this commented. Alright, so I just uploaded the code. Um, so, wait, um, let's start from the beginning. You can press reset here. As you can see, here's the splash screen, and then here's the counter text, and then here's the actual count. Um, these two buttons, um, this one is, I believe is down. When I press it, it doesn't go to negative because of our error handling. And then, if you press this button, it should go up. One, two, three, four, five. Right, when we press this down button, one, two, three, four, five. It just goes back down. Now, let's test the reset feature. Okay, we have 21 counts. If you press reset, if you press both of the buttons at once, we should get this. Ha! reset text and then the counter resets to zero and you can count again um, the best part about this is because the button detects the state change when you press it when you long press it it doesn't increment more you know more than once it doesn't in increment more than once it just increments once and when you let go, you press it again, you get an increment, but when you hold it, you don't add any counts to the counter.
Alright, so that's everything for the ESP32 Telecounter tutorial. I know this tutorial is kind of long, but I do hope you follow along. If you run into any problems or if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment section. I'm going to answer it as much as I possibly can. I'm also going to drop the code on my GitHub. Um, the link is going to be in the description. Um, that's all. Thanks for watching and see you next time.